Good morning, afternoon, evening, guys. You're locked into Conscious Minds TV with myself, DVG. And I'm back with my lovely sister, Erin Wage. And if you haven't already checked out our first show, go back and check that out. We had a really interesting conversation on astrology and herbal medicine, amongst many other topics. But um, in this week's show, we're going to concentrate uh, on a few with spoke of, before we uh, jumped on the show we spoke about a few things we're going to talk about and we want to talk about the current uh, energy of the planet and what's going on and how we can raise our consciousness and getting out of fear and also we're going to talk about being empathetic and empaths as obviously there's a lot of energy going around so it's a time where we're taking in a lot of people's energy and we're also going to touch up on uh, the age of Aquarius and the movement of planets towards the sign of Aquarius. How's it going, sister? Thanks for joining me again. We got some really good feedback on our last show. A lot of people like the connection and the vibe that we have going on. So it's definitely great to connect again. Thank you. Yeah, no, thank you. I, I absolutely agree with you. It's just, it feels good to share information with somebody who's kind of the same, you know. Definitely. Are, you know. And so I really appreciate our conversations. Um, and also, I just wanted to put this out there that I did listen to all your, your the tunes you sent me, your music. Your oh, right. And dude, very, very impressed. Oh, very you, impressed. That means a lot, thank you. Absolutely, for sure, yeah. Thank you. Um, so yeah, I'm doing well. And yeah, I just, I, I personally reached out to Mem again to just say, you know, I feel like, there's a lot going on in the world and I mean there always is but right now it just seems like it's extra heavy and um yeah I know that for myself even before I knew anything about astrology I knew I was an empath you know it was yep. kind of like the rise of this new age thing and I started to you know get into that all of this new age stuff, you know, which I'm not necessarily super into at this point, but it, it was a little bit of an awakening for me and, and just recognizing there is such thing as being an empath and recognizing that I'm feeling other people's energies and not just my own. And I know I'm not alone, you know, I know that that's a big thing, especially right now and feeling each other's energy and there's just, there's so much fear going on in the world right now. And as we talked about in our last show, this is, it all makes perfect astrological sense. It really, it's all in perfect alignment. Um, but there's a way that we can, it, I, I, I feel like it's, a, it, it would be, I don't know, in my, in the best interest of the world for everybody to just try and um, do their part in trying to raise the vibration here and yeah. try you know maybe calm the fears a little bit and the ways that i know how to do that is to work with astrology <laughs> so yeah. it's yeah. almost like making what you're trying to say is we need to make the best out of a bad situation and try and transform that energy yeah. from negative to positive for sure absolutely yeah yeah in fact a lot of our a lot of the you know intense energy that we're feeling right now has to do with Pluto being conjunct uh, Jupiter. And yep. Pluto is about transformational processes and Jupiter wants to expand them exactly. expand them right next to each other. And so, yeah, and going to the sign of Capricorn, Capricorn is, um, it can be kind of rigid, you know? And, and I, I love the sign of Capricorn. I have a lot of friends who are wonderful Capricorn, you right. know, people, but the, it's like the, the combination of the energies that are, that are going on here in the Senate Capricorn are not necessarily the most, um, I, I don't know, just, they don't necessarily give us joy, but we're going to try and bring some joy into it, I guess. <laughs> Sister, you're kind of freezing up a bit. But, okay. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it's a bit better now, but... Um... Yeah, you're better now, but yeah, it was freezing up a bit. But yeah, it's all right. We'll just carry on. I could still hear you clearly, so it's fine. Okay. Yeah, you're you've been frozen, um, and that that might be my connection. And, and my apologies. Okay, um, yeah, that's all right. That's fine. Okay. Okay. Well, hopefully it'll catch up. Um, yeah. So, 
Yeah, basically what I wanted to just start out with was talking about the, the empath stuff and how there's, there is a lot of fear. There's a lot of fear going on in the world right now, whether you're afraid of catching the coronavirus or whether you're afraid of, um, you know, the martial law or the new world order or, and I'm just going off of stuff I've seen in memes, you know, on, on Facebook and Instagram and just out there in the community. Uh, even, you know, fear of, um, vaccines and all that stuff. Yeah, and, oh, yeah, so many things. Gee, all of it. There's just, there's so much fear out there. Um, which makes sense again, like astrologically, it all makes sense. Uh, but we're all kind of feeding off of each other. And this is not the vibration that I necessarily feel comfortable existing in. So, um, the way that I wanted to try and, you know, help us through that is through knowledge and, and through really, um, Aquarius energy, because yeah. In my own opinion, I really do strongly feel that we are entering at least the cusp of the age of Aquarius. Um, I mean, even, you know, the symbol for Aquarius is like, uh, it's, it's waves. It's, you know, it's waves. It's an air sign and they're like energy waves. Um, That's which so is interesting, sister. Actually, sorry, I don't mean to cut you off. Mm -hmm. Now I've remembered it. C continue what you're saying, and I'll remember that for. I just want to add on to that. Oh, yeah, please do. No, it's just, you know, going back to the whole fear of 5G. I mean, we're, like, right now, we're, I've got my tablet right here. I've got my computer in front of me. I obviously have these radiation waves just beaming at me. You know, I can't I protect myself with it, with things like this is black tourmaline, um, I mean, even just this little necklace, there's so many ways to protect yourself from these things. Yeah, I've got, where is my, your copper bracelet and stuff. Yeah, I put mine on, I put mine on, because I remember you mentioned that last show, I was like, I better put my copper bracelet on this time. <laughs> yeah. Um, so yeah, that's just one of the things that helps me recognize that I really do think that we're entering this age of Aquarius. There's so much more, but I want to hear what you have to say. Yeah, you see what you said about like the waves and the technology. Well, I mm -hmm. remember when I first got into studying astrology and I don't know who it was, whether it was Santos or whether, whoever it was that told me, I can't remember who, who brought this idea up. I don't really remember. But they say that the elites use the um, element of the sign to dictate that age. So for example, in the last 2000 years, everything's been about maritime law and shipping and cargoing. And it's because we was in the age of Pisces, which is water. But now we're moving into the age of Aquarius. The, the uh, elements change, which is air. That's why we have all this wireless technology and like you say, 5G. So the, ele uh, the uh, elites use the elements of the consciousness of the time and the, the sign and the age, and they impose that within society. Yeah. That's all I'm going to add on to what you said, basically. For sure. I'm so glad you brought that up because I hadn't really, you know, I guess I knew that somewhere back here, but I hadn't really brought it to full consciousness. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, that's another great point. Um, and I mean, really, just the motto of Aquarius is I know, you yeah. know, exactly. it's knowledge, it's information, you know, and so. That being said, it's like we can really utilize this energy to, you know, just use Aquarius's qualities to help raise the vibration. And again, this is knowledge. I know, you know. Yeah, it's like, for example, me and you are doing it right now through technology. We're mm -hmm. communicating and sharing ideas to the world because we want to do our humanitarian part and give... <laughs> The world some information and share it and it's like we're pouring the spirit i'm not saying we're spiritual like but it's like we're doing the deed of aquarius we're pouring the spiritual waters yep. to people to, to bless them in a sense and that's what um aquarius is about because it's because aquarius relates to john the baptist right of the bat being baptized with the spiritual waters and stuff like that yep so exactly. there's a connection there as well Exactly, exactly. Yeah, a lot of people confuse Aquarius with being a water sign because of its Exactly, time. yeah. 
Um, but it's really, it's the, it's the water bearer. It's the yeah. one who carries the water. And I think about it in terms of that uh, water really is information. Water carries information. Yep. You know, are you familiar with Dr. Emoto's work? I'm not, but it was so funny. I was watching something yesterday. And I know that water's always like been uh, capable to like, uh, it memorizes things basically. It's, it's, it's able to store memory. And yeah, that's yeah. why I think us water signs are so psychic in that way because we can pick up. That's why maybe we are empaths and we can pick up on that. Totally, totally. On other people's yeah. energies because it's like they were saying, like even, because obviously if you watch like cymatics where they like, yes. they'll like do a frequency and it will change the shape of the water or the sand. So it's like even they say when we eat or when we're about to drink something, if we do like a prayer or like a kind mm -hmm. of chant to the water and give it a good vibration, it will help us when it put, we put it in our body. Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, uh, just real quick, Dr. Emoto, uh, he's, he's no longer with us here on earth, but he, uh, was a researcher that would take water, um, and he would freeze it. I'm not exactly sure of the whole process, but I know he would freeze it. Well, actually, I'm sorry. Hold on. Let me digress. He would take, say, three glasses of water, all, put them all in the exact same, um, type of glass, you know, make sure they're sterilized and that sort of thing. And he would put a, a label on each glass of water. One would say, like, I hate you. One would yep. say, I love you. Okay, so you know what I'm talking about. And then the other one he wouldn't say anything to. And he would actually go in and tell that water, I love you. Tell the other water, I hate you. And then leave the other water alone. And then he would freeze that water. And he would, um, through some special technology microscope be able to um see the frozen water molecules and how the ones that said i love you were these perfect symmetrical like snowflake looking things and the one that was ignored was you know kind of funky and then the one that said i hate you you know it just it, it was very asymmetrical and very kind of a weird looking you know molecule and so that, it, he did so many other things but that was kind of all the proof I needed to say, oh yeah, okay, water really, really does carry information. So the water bear, Aquarius, the water bear is carrying that information. It's almost like it, it doesn't, it's not attached to the uh, emotions of water. It's just carrying them and almost just like turning it into a detached, it's not an emotion anymore. Now it's just information and it pours the water out and water, always finds its level, <laughs> water spreads throughout humanity, you know, and shares that information. Definitely. So that, yeah, that Most being- interesting, sister, this is why I related Muhammad, the prophet, the messenger of God in the Islam religion, to the sign of Aquarius in my show I did with Santos, mm -hmm. because of this reason, because obviously the I know motto would, because why would he know God's word, if that makes sense, and not everyone else? So it's like, he's the one, he's that water bearer who come and enlightened everyone. Yeah. yeah that's yeah, why yeah. I kind of connected it to Muhammad. And also in uh, the Islamic tradition, Muhammad flies on a white horse yes. um, to heaven on, Pegasus, on, on a white mm -hmm. horse. And in Aquarius, you have the deacon of Pegasus. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And in yeah. that, that deacon is ruled by Gemini, which is ruled by Mercury, which is the messenger. So that's the connection I made as well with yeah. that. And then, and then I think uh, there was even some ties to uh, Uranus being uh, Aquarius's ruler, yep. and Uranus being sort of like the higher octave of Mercury. That's right. Yep. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, yeah, Uranus. I mean, it's um, considered like the uh, the ancient greek god of the sky yep. you know has a lot to do with astrology um it's, it's the firmament isn't it basically yeah. this the, yeah. it symbolizes the 12 signs yes yeah okay so yeah there's strong ties between just the term astrology or astrologos yep. uh, you know the science of light yep and the aquarius energy and uh, let's see what else I want to say. And then there's also Saturn. Saturn is also one of Aquarius's rulers, yep. which is 
you know, the ruler of time and agriculture, how much is our agricultural systems changing, you know? Um, but then even just going beyond all that and just thinking about the simple terms that we would use to describe Aquarius energy. I mean, we could start with revolutionary, Definitely. you know? <laughs> that's, that's quite apparent that we're going through some sort of a revolution right now. And it's like, yeah, let's, let's be revolutionary. There's even, you know, Aquarius energy is very rebellious yep. and to combine those things. And we, we see, um, there's also humanitarianism. We see people wanting to join together. People are tired of being locked down on this, whatever this is, you know, that, lockdown, you know, people not allowed to leave their houses and that sort of thing. People are getting fed up with that and they're starting to come together and they're starting to stand up for their rights and being revolutionary and being original. Um, and I would just encourage people to continue with that, to really stand up for what you believe is, is right, but in a really respectful way, yep. you know, in a positive way. I totally agree sister, because like, I think that the elites are using it in a way where it's kind of, they're making it look like they're doing something good, but there's a like a bit of a twisted undertone to it, if that makes sense. And I, mm -hmm. I definitely know why you've said that statement because I see that as well. Cause yeah. it's like, there's so many different little, uh, groups like you have like the vegan the bi oh the feminist groups and you have the lgbt groups and this group and that group and it's all good that all people should be respected for who they are and what they are but at mm -hmm. the same time i think that they shouldn't really be well i think if See, I think the education system plays a big part in this because I think that if they kind of just said from the start, like, maybe, look, we're all different. We're all not going to be the same. So we all respect each other's identities or gender preferences or whatever it is. But at the same time, we don't force it upon each other. Do you get what I mean? And that's, that's the way... Like, I kind of see it because if someone is gay or bi or transgender, it's none of my business. Everywhere, all got free will. We can all do what we want. But if, 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 you, if that's who you want to be, just be it in your private life, in your bedroom or wherever. You, like, what I mean is it's not, to me personally, it's not an issue that should be brought to the forefront of society. Yeah. Because yeah. It's, it's a private issue that like sexuality to me is, but obviously because through media it's big, it's made, it's been made such a public issue. Mm -hmm. It's like, mm -hmm. this is where it gets twisted. Mm -hmm. right? yep. Like we should respect other people's choices and uh, preferences, but at the same yep. time, we shouldn't be forcing it in each other's face. Yes. Sorry, yeah. I was a bit of a long-winded... Uh, no, no, totally. I get it. I get it. I totally do. And I, I, I completely understand that. It's like, I think most people, I mean, I, maybe, maybe not, but it just seems to me like most people, um, not only just where I live, but just I communicate with people from all over the world, you know? Fine. And, and it's seems to me that that just is like a natural thing even if you don't necessarily um appreciate somebody else's lifestyle you're just gonna let them do it you know what i mean yeah, most exactly. people anyway. most people anyway but that also everything you just said is so aquarius because even though aquarius is um this sign of humanitarianism and large groups it's also a sign of individuality you know, so it's like being your own unique self, but being able to coexist with the rest of the world, you know, without, 
I, I don't know who said something about like, you can swing your arm as much as you want, as long as it doesn't hit somebody else in the face kind of thing. It, it's just- Really what? interesting, sister, because if you think about opposite Aquarius is Leo, which is very yeah. self-centered. <laughs> and yeah. Aquarius is more about service to others and humanity and stuff. But mm -hmm. I guess like, you know where you mentioned the individuality? Yes. They say that the sign opposite you is almost like your mirror mirror image. So I guess like they kind of connect in a way, like that individuality from Leo might come through into Aquarius. Yeah. Like, yeah. For example, like me being a Scorpio, that mm -hmm. Taurus energy will reflect through myself as well, because it's like my mirror image. But just to quickly add on to that, if you watch like the work of like Manly P. Hall and like, because he talks about like esoteric astrology and i think the elite some there's like the elites use it in the opposite way so for example they would say you would be a virgo <laughs> because they say you're really the sign opposite where the sun was when you was born it's just a different system of astrology i'm not sure if you're aware of that um and i no, i didn't i and and that name sounds what is it again the, the guy's name manly p hall Okay. Okay. Yeah. I, I mean, I know I've seen some stuff yeah. from him, but it's not anything I'm super familiar with, yeah. but I think after spending one day with me, people would very quickly <laughs> see that there's no Virgo energy in me whatsoever. <laughs> um, I, unfortunately, I wish I did have a little Virgo energy, but uh, they're just very tidy and very organized and yeah. that's not, not me, but um, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I just, you know, it's, it just seems like all together as a group, I mean, if, if we can, um, I, I guess I, I kind of want to do, a, I don't know if I already said this. I do feel like things are starting to lighten up a little bit around the world. There was this crazy, intense, like conjunction between all these things in Capricorn when this whole thing broke out and it was just everybody was freaking out and living in fear it was just a shock you know it was and that also has to do with Uranus and Taurus right yeah um just a shock and I feel like things are starting to lighten up a little bit as things move into the the, Aquar the sign of Aquarius but Saturn is going to retrograde here soon you know, and it's going to go back into Capricorn. And I'm personally, the way I'm feeling, I mean, I'm feeling it so many different ways, but I feel like there might be a little bit of this. Um, like a round two is what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. But, oh, I'm not just that. <laughs> <laughs> but I feel like that could be such an opportune time to reevaluate how we're going to go about that. When celestial bodies go into retrograde, that's the, the way that I really kind of, um, I, I like to uh, like process that is a time to reevaluate whatever that celestial body represents. You know, when Mercury goes into retrograde, then I, I want to, I want to reevaluate my, my mental thoughts, like, you know, how, I, and communication. How did I, how did I communicate this month? How did I, you know, that sort of thing. Um, and with Saturn, <clears throat> you know, retrograding back into Capricorn, it might be a time for us to all just kind of process this. And I think it's something like May through November or something like that. I can't quite remember the dates, but basically we're going to have a big chunk of this year where we might have to go through some tough times. I think June might be kind of a tough one. Um, you heard about June from a lot of people that I know do research. The, same, yeah. the summer solstice, something big is going to happen on June yeah. 21st. Some yeah. portal or something was going to be opened. And again, I don't know that. It's just things I've heard. But like, it's interesting you saying about uh, Saturn's going to retrograde back into Capricorn. Because I spoke about this on the show I did with Santos. And he yeah. said it's almost like Saturn's coming in and out of Capricorn and Aquarius. Like he's coming to Aquarius to kind of give us a bit of flavor of what we've got to come in the future and then totally. he's going back kind of thing totally to carry on with what he needs to do before he fully goes into Aquarius yep 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 yep, yep. I absolutely agree with that and yeah um that yeah that that just resonates 
with me is truth. So it's like, we're kind of maybe getting a little bit of a, you know, what we can do as, as a whole group of people here on earth, respect one another, you know, and also be friendly. Aquarius energy is so friendly. It's, I mean, it's, it's a, re it's cool. It's like a cool, friendly energy, you know? Yeah. Um, and not only that, but it is also, it has so much to do with, I mean, I don't mean to reiterate too much, but so much to do with information yep. and it's, it's a, like, we are just in the age of information. For sure. It's like the internet, this, like what we're doing now, again, like yep. I said, it just proves it. For sure. Totally. totally. In the last, it's like, I always say this sister to people like oh, on my shows or whenever I'm talking to people, I've learned more in the last five years of my life just studying on my own through the internet than I have in my whole life. Hopefully. It just goes to show what you're saying with the age of information and sharing. But I think this really ties into the Aquarius thing, not just with the technology, but in terms of sharing and being like that humanitarian um, archetype we was talking about, because that's what a humanitarian deeds are about it's about giving what you've got for other people to use as well and to share so definitely i see that yeah yeah exactly so yeah i think that's just a huge part of it and you know even just um i, I just think it's another thing is just it's so it's so important to understand that <sighs> going back to not taking things personally i feel like we're we're kind of living in a time where people are very easily triggered and people take things very personally. And that's one of the real strong qualities of Aquarius is to not, to like detach from that, you know, and, and understand that everybody's been programmed with so many different, you know, perspectives of truth. And, you know, I have my own very strong um, perspective of truth about just everything, everything. You know, I've been, like you said, you know, we've been um, this last five years. I mean, for me, it's been like, I just, it, Santos Bonacci, I remember nine years ago, the first time I watched the Santos Bonacci video and like, whoa, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and it was like, buckle your seatbelt for this. And, but I mean, yeah, five years, it, the past five years, it seems like even more, cause that's when I started really going into the professional realm of astrology. Um, but yeah, okay, so going back to that, just not taking things personally, everybody's been, you know, exposed to certain information here and there and to not, you know, lash out at people. Oh God, I'm a comment reader. I always read comments. <laughs> I'm the same as well. I read like, yeah, so it's it's, it's like it kind of gives me um, an idea as to where people are at, you know. Yeah, and, of course. And so I see people just saying the most rude, insultive things to each other that I don't think they would ever say to each other if they it was face to face. You know, they're just hiding behind a computer somewhere. But that. That's just not, it's not going to help anybody to, you know, it, that's just the information that that person has been exposed to. And if you're going to attack them for it, it's not going to get anybody anywhere. Yeah. You know? Yeah. I get attacked all the time on my comments, sister, like literally, I'm like people get so, like you said, like so defensive about it. I'm like, I'm thinking to myself, why are you so defensive about what I'm saying? I'm not talking about you. It's just an idea I've got about a particular subject or like what like I know. I do know why it is why people do get defensive. It's because when you question someone's belief or their program and you kind of, you show them there's a hole in it or yep. like they don't like it because it's like it shatters their, yeah, like I said, it shatters their program or their mind state, and you think, oh shit, it's not what I thought it was, and people start panicking and stuff like that. So I think that's like, or me, maybe people just, yeah, people find it hard to admit that they've been wrong or been tricked because I don't want to feel like they've been fooled. Yep. I think that is the big thing with people, whereas me and you and others, we've accepted it and trying to, again, 
make a negative into a positive. Yes. And it's like, we know all this bad information. We're not saying it. We're not telling... But when I say bad, like... You know, like conspiracy information, so called, yeah. or things that governments do, or so. When you explain it to people, it's like they get defensive. But there's, I think, there was a quote about uh, you know when your plan has worked when it's something like when the you know like when you oppress, like for example, just say if I oppressed you and I was being okay. really horrible to you. Yeah. Someone said something about me. You would defend me because, like, I've oppressed you so much that you think I'm helping you, but really I'm just deceiving you. And yeah. that's like people get defensive over their kind of leaders and their oppressors, and but they don't realise that they're being oppressed. Totally. Sorry, that was another long-winded explanation. No, but it's a good one. And, and you're that's my Mercury in Sagittarius. <laughs> 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 that's awesome actually <laughs> I, love that. I love that because i do that all the time i'm like oh my mercury in aries is so <laughs> because obviously mercury's quick and rapid but obviously yeah, yeah. my communication and they obviously it falls in sagittarius so yeah sorry <laughs> that was just a little astrology joke <laughs> oh, good. i love it um but yeah okay so your your point is so like it's so on point that you know to think that the government is gonna save us is it's time to it's really time to open up to other sort of yeah uh, only we can save ourselves that's the that's the way i see it you get what yeah. i mean and and like and like-minded people like me and you we help each other we give each other ideas you get what I mean? Like we can help each other, like, but we can just plant seeds for each other. Ultimately, we have to go and do the work. Yep. You get what I mean? So yep. that's all what we do. We just plant seeds at the end of the day. Yeah. What yep. we want some uh, flowers to grow. That's that's all we're doing, really. But yep. people, I don't know. I guess people don't like flowers. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. You know, I'm pretty sure in biodynamics, the um, Aquarius energy or just the air signs are associated with uh, with flowers. So there you go. Okay. <laughs> so, but my out. Aquarius is in the seventh house. What's that? My Aquarius in my chart is in the seventh house. <laughs> so, pe so I'm very Aquarian in my relationships, I guess. Huh. That's interesting. Yeah, mine's in the uh, in the second house, goes into the third. But yeah, I always thought that was interesting because, yeah, I don't want to go into that. We'll do that sometime. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> so let's see. You know, I I feel like we kind of we covered mostly everything I wanted to go over. Just again, just it's like I I just feel so strongly about trying to get people to and forgive the term wake up. You know, because that's very like kind of loosely used but yeah. it, but it's it's kind of true it's it's kind of just like to recognize that or just open your heart and your mind for one minute to to other alternative pieces of information yeah. other than what you're just getting on the TV. other term which might sound less harsh to wake up was just to be more aware that's all that's like a nice of phrase of trying to coin that term of being awake because if you say to someone oh you're not awake it sounds like a bit condescending yeah, totally and it's just totally. like so we just gotta all try and be a bit more aware and not be be uh, like it's weird because you know like with me it's like i get angry sometimes at people who don't get it and don't under but that's i'm not angry at them i'm just it's more my passion it's more frustration because I know that I was once that person as well. So I can't really judge. Do you get what I mean? We're all on our individual journeys and we all pick up things differently. We've all had different upbringings and yep. different backgrounds. This plays also a lot into the way we are. It, like That and our astrology combined kind of moulds who we are. Like Because we've got our set kind of blueprint. Yes. But like... Maybe if I had my blueprint and I lived in a different family, 
Mm -hmm. I would still kind of be me, but maybe I would have expressed my energies through different things or different ways. Or maybe if I grew, was born into a different culture. So mm -hmm. it's, it's so interesting that, but of how your life and the way you're brought up might bring the best out of your chart or the worst. And it, it's just, that's the whole, that's the good thing about reading your chart. It's like you can find that balance. Yeah. For sure, definitely. Yeah, that actually, that kind of just triggered something in my mind about how somebody asked me the other day if if I believe in free will, and I absolutely do. I definitely do. I feel like our our natal chart is kind of like our blueprint to yeah. our existence, and and we've got karmic choices that we can make with that, and our environment or where we're raised, how we're raised, is going to play a huge part in that. Cool. Uh, like, because like you know, like when you get like, you know, like you always get these people that try and like rubbish astrology. Oh, I'm sure two people born at the same time of the day won't be exactly the same. No, of course they're not going to be exactly the same because they've got two different genetics and two different parents and two different upbringings. But it's just it, like, see, the thing is that it's just people don't understand it's more of an energy thing like it's more of a frequency thing of like how you might react to particular situations or what you might be inclined to like more and mm -hmm. you get what i mean it don't mean that you're like this and you're like this and like you're like yeah, yeah. So set. it's just it's just it's more of a the way i see it, it's just more of an yeah it's just i explain it I think of it in the sense that it kind of shows what flavours you're into and what you like. That's all, really. It's just like an indicator for that. And yeah. by knowing that, you can channel that energy to do positive things. Yes, totally. You know what I mean? So it's like, like for example, before I checked my chart, I never knew I was a Leo Ascendant and this and that. And But then once I read into it and I was thinking about how I am as a person and like I actually thought oh wow and I I'm, I actually try kind of made a bit of a conscious effort to try and bring that side out of me more yeah if that makes sense to try yeah. and be a bit more confident and to be a bit more expressive whereas if I didn't know that I still might be this like timid shy kind of person who don't really express themselves but literally my chart is just it's expression that's the only thing when i think of my chart I just think of the word expression i've got like a stellium in the fifth house and yeah. like a leo rising and a taurus moon moon well that's your mouth so that's all about talking and yeah. stuff and all and all fixed signs as well my son's in scorpio my moon's in taurus and my rising is Leo, so I've got a lot of fixed energy. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. But, yeah, I just think that people should embrace it more rather than try oh, it's all, it's all airy-fairy and yes. stuff like that. But then again, on the flip side, I just think that it's, yeah. if they don't get it or they don't like it, it's not meant for them to get it. Yeah, I'm not going to shove it in anybody's face that doesn't want to hear about it. Actually, that's not totally true. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm, I'm just I'm more specifically referring to my, my brother. I live with my brother and and he's he just, he, you know, he, <laughs> he, I, I start talking to him. And he says, just don't say anything about the nodes. <laughs> 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 um, but you know, I just I'm like you, you mentioned earlier. I just try to plant seeds in a gentle way. I don't. I really don't shove it down. Yeah, as, same as well. I, like, yeah. But with me, sometimes I can't help myself. It's just like I'll be around something and I'll hear someone say something, and then I think, oh, that's because of this and this and this and in astrology. And yes. I'm thinking, should I say something? Should I not? And then sometimes I'll say things and it, and just see what how they react. Yeah. And then yeah. Take it from there. But like yeah. it was weird. I remember uh, when I first started work, I was trying to guess everybody's signs by looking at them and stuff. Mm -hmm. And I, I was I got a few right, but I got a couple wrong. But it was just uh -huh. funny. But yeah. 
Yeah, no, that's the best. I love that. I love that. In fact, there was one day I was um, giving readings at this little shop downtown and these two girls came into the shop and they were probably in their early 20s, just hyper and kind of all uh, dolled up, you know, and they came in and they were like, oh, astrology, kind of not necessarily in a rude way, but just in a sort of catty way, yep. you know, kind of like maybe snide remarks a little bit. And one of them says, well, you know, if it's real, can you, why don't you guess our signs? And I looked at them and I was like, you know, I'd really just, I'd have to at least have a conversation with you for a few minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then they looked at each other and they said something that was kind of like, dee, 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 dee. and I went, Pisces, Gemini. And they were like, <laughs> you know, they just couldn't <laughs> believe it. And it was, there was other people in the shop too. And I was like, yes, <laughs> you know. I love that. That's you know, the best feeling ever. Because yeah. it's like, not because of your ego, it's just more, it's more <laughs> to do with just proving the science right, if that makes sense. Boom, totally, absolutely. I'm not going to lie. My Venus and Mercury and South Oder and Aries, there's a little, I'm a Pisces, so the ego is minimal, but it's there. It felt good. You that's know what I mean? Basic, <laughs> like, like, as much as, as much as we say, are oh, we trying not to have an e? We've all got it at the end of the day. Like, yeah. do you get what I mean? It's just a part of For being sure. human at the end of the day. It's just that we just have to learn how to use it in the right way. Yeah, it can be a tool. You know I, mean? like, I find that sometimes I find myself like, you know how I say I'm an Aquarius. Uh, my seventh house is Aquarius. Yeah. Yes. And then sometimes I find myself like I'm talking to people. And then I'm telling them all this stuff because I'm just excited and enthusiastic. And then I think to myself, shit, I bet they're thinking, oh, this guy think he knows it all or he's being too arrogant. Uh -huh. And then I think, and then I'll just be quiet. Like sometimes, like I know, like even with my show I did with you, uh -huh. no, it's like, and even with Santos, and I don't mean to do it like to be rude. It's just, I think I'm a, just a, my enthusiasm. I need to learn how to calm it down. Sometimes I cut cut into people when they're talking, and I, but, but I don't mean to do it root, to be rude. It's just that my enthusiasm gets in yeah, the way yeah. sometimes. And you have important things to say. I told, and you don't want to forget it. You yeah, know? exactly. I, That's why I want to say it. <laughs> yeah, I get it. I do the same thing. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, the the thing is with understanding your natal chart and like you were talking about how once you kind of embraced your Leo rising, just how it probably helped you just to understand that, you know, and to work with it, you know, and I, I, I know a hundred percent for sure. Like I'm so confident in saying that I've become um, just a better person overall by understanding my own natal chart. Totally and sister. I, me as well. Like I would say like, since I've got into all this science and that and looking into stuff like obviously I've we all there's always work to do till the day we yep. die or whatever but I can honestly say that personally I, I love what's happened to me in the last three or four five six years like mm -hmm. but the thing like we like I love it and I've met the most amazing people like in my life like people like yourself and just all the people I've met and it's just like it's weird it's like you know they say your vibe attracts your tribe yes and I think yeah. that is so true and that's what I love about doing what what I'm doing because it's just I'm connecting with people who I should be connecting with rather yeah. than just meeting some random person I've got no kind of connection with or no nothing in common which is a good thing as well because you still learn from exactly. other people that like new things you don't know and I like that as well do you get what I mean it's, yeah. that's what I'm saying there's a you always have to look at things from a double like a double-sided coin like although one thing might be annoying there will be something good on the other side that if you just twist that coin round, you'll find out. Yep. I totally and completely see that 100%. Yeah. And it's, it is so true. It's like, I feel like once, um, 
you know, I started clearing my physical body out of the garbage that I used to put into it, you know? Um, and I think I kind of probably, well, I think actually it might've started with maybe more of a little bit of a spiritual cleanse for myself. Yeah. Um, but then, then it very quickly went into cleansing my physical body. Yeah. Mine was the same. I started yeah. more on the knowledge and mm -hmm. like looking at stuff. And then once I got into that, it kind of forced me to do more physical work and mm -hmm. try and just change some habits. And uh, mm -hmm. again, I've made a lot of changes. I'm still working on it. Like it's weird. Like I, I would say like I am much better, but I can still improve. Like, but I don't know if that's just me being critical of myself. But I don't think it is. I'm just being honest. No, I think there was, all, we can, no matter who you are, there's always yeah. room for improvement. There's, you know, it's like until you're an ascended master, I mean, maybe even ascended masters still have room for improvement, <laughs> you know? Um, but yeah, it's like once, once I, let me ask you this, because I feel for myself that I would, there's no way I would have been able to absorb and like hold the information that I have over these past, you know, five years, if I wasn't clean. Yeah, that's, that's a very interesting point, sister, you know that. Because sometimes, like, I think to myself, is it a coincidence that ever since, like, for example, like, I stopped eating meat and stopped doing certain things and, like, trying to be more healthy and, like, it just... I don't know if it's a coincidence or if it just works hand in hand. It's weird because I feel like literally the more, more better I've been, the more disciplined or the more improvements I'm making, it's just like the more knowledge I get and the more connections. It's like you're almost opening up gates and portals within yourself to like bring the puzzle together. Which, which actually very literally could be very true, you know? Um, and I think a lot of that again can just be tied into our natal charts and our transits and our progressions, you know, um, it, it, it's like, I just, I think back to, you know, cause I, I, well, I don't know, it's been so long, but like seven, eight years ago, I just ate really unhealthy food and I drank so much alcohol and, um, you know, I, put substances into my body that were probably not in my best interest. And, um, you know, just getting, you know, clean from all that it was hard, but it was very hard, but you know, we did it right. And now being able to embrace the, the science uh, and the language of astrology and being able to utilize my transits and my progressions to really like really reach my highest soul purpose you know and there always will be room for improvement but it's like to understand even just where you know our north node is i think is a very important thing Definitely. you know where um, is your one sister okay so my north node is in the sign of libra and it's right at the top it's it's i'm very closely conjunct my mc yeah is public life and career and it's in the 10th sorry my north node is in the ninth house yeah and then then there's the mc which is also in libra and then in the 10th house is pluto in libra and they're all very closely conjunct so that tells me you know with my north node up there it's in my best interest to get out into the public more by nature i'm much more of an introverted person yep same. I've, yeah i've got a packed you know fourth house and Mostly everything is down at the bottom of my chart, but then there's Pluto and my North Node up at my MC saying in Libra, saying you know, let's let's share information, let's get out into the public more. And furthermore, my son is in my third house, and that they make some aspects yeah. there. And so it's it's been really hard because these things oppose my my fourth house, this opposition that's been going on. If I didn't know my natal chart, I don't know. It's like I can recognize just by looking at my natal chart and transits included and all of it. Oh, okay. It's I really can gain a lot by um, overcoming my fear of getting out into the public, you know, and 
and sharing the information that, you know, and I do, I go out and I do public things and even just stuff like this, you know, and then, um, for a little while and then i'm like okay i need to go back into my little <laughs> you know? you've got to balance it right just so you know you got to just find out what your limits are i suppose because yes. like even me like i have a north node in gemini uh -huh. in the 11th house which makes total sense to me 11th house yeah like <laughs> communication in social clubs and with friends and and like Gemini is obviously like the student and like learning and stuff like that. So, and it's about the mind. And so I totally see that in myself. Like, that's what I love doing. I just love talking to my friends and like, I, I definitely see that. And obviously it's funny because myself knows in Sagittarius with like five other planets, which is about like Sagittarius is like philosophy and higher wisdom and stuff. So it's like, I'm transforming that fifth house, all that energy in the fifth house, like directly opposite to the yes. other. Interesting. Yeah, I want you to send me your chart again. Um, yeah. It's also interesting because my um, Uranus um, is in Scorpio in the 11th house. It's not necessarily, it wouldn't necessarily be totally conjunct your sun. It'd be about nine degrees away, but still it's interesting that, yeah. you know. Uh, Uranus is uh, exalted in Scorpio, so that's a good placement. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah and my Uranus is in Sagittarius. Okay, okay, yeah. I, I, I do, I do want to see your chart again. Um, but yeah, you know, I just, it, it, just even opening up people's, you know, minds to oh, maybe this stuff. Even if you're somebody who just has no interest in it just like look on the internet to see what your your sun and your moon sign is and see if you find that that resonates with you. It, you know what's really what's a really weird question sister it's like a lot of people ask me oh, could, could could you teach me astrology i could teach you astrology but Ultimately, I think if you really want to learn it, you have to just do it yourself. Yeah. Because like I could tell you stuff that could just be like from my like because the way with me like it it wasn't just like someone told me to look at it and I started looking at it with me. I just came across it and it just like it was like that. You know, like what you said when you watched that video and you went, "Wow, let's get ready for this ride." Yeah, That's yeah. the exact same thing that happened to me. When I watched that first astrotheology video, I was like, <laughs> whoa, this is, oh, wow, this is amazing. <laughs> yeah. It literally stunned me. It was like a, I always say this, it was literally like a slap out, a slap around the face, and it was like, I just woke up out of a dream. Yep. That kind of analogy I oh, get when I first started looking into astrology. And it hasn't stopped like since but like at one point i was like reading a lot of charts for people but recently i haven't been doing it so like sometimes i like i just ask people can you like send me your chart just so i can it's just good to get your brain working and yes look so. at things and it's weird you know one thing i don't know if this will be an interesting question to ask you as someone who does it regularly like, do you ever get, like, do you feel like some days you're, like, really on form when you're reading a chart and other times you, it's just like you can't quite explain it or do you not get that? No, and I, I get that all the time, but um, I, I think, I guess it probably has some, sometimes it has to do with the day, but a lot of it has to do with the person, too. You know, I've got no earth in my chart. I mean, no, you know, prominent placements of earth in my chart. So when... Um, so somebody comes to me that's you know got everything in Capricorn and Virgo or whatever I just don't I it, I can still do it I can do it from what's up here but I can't really like tap into it and like feel it and be like oh I'm not you know <laughs> I've got you know what sister you that's so interesting what you said so, because it's like, I know what you mean. It's because you don't have any planets or in Virgo. It's like you haven't really concentrated on that part as much. Yeah. yeah. That's like with me as well, with particular signs. It's like, 
I have to double check what they like sometimes and yeah. it's like I know more about particular signs than other yeah. signs because yeah. they relate to me personally. Yes. Yeah, totally. So I totally get that. Yeah, absolutely. But then yeah, there's also some days where I'm just not really feeling it and some days where I'm like, boom, you know, I'm feeling it. Yeah, yeah, same. It's just like there's some days where I could just be on point and just like this is this because of this and this. And there's other days I'm like looking at a chart and I'm thinking, uh, it's weird. I guess, like you said, it must just depend on your mood. And mm -hmm. it probably depends on so many different things. Mm -hmm. like, mm -hmm. It could just be, it could be the simple fact, just thinking about it. Maybe we haven't been so uh, disciplined in what we're putting in our body and we might have a blockage at that time. Mm -hmm. that's stopping us from uh, exercising or reaching our true potential so it just might be down to us yeah you know another thing too is are you um, familiar with when the moon goes void of course I'm not no okay okay so it happens very regularly because um, the moon changes zodiac signs approximately every two and a half days. Yeah, okay, I know that. the moon is very quick moving. Um, so right before the moon goes from one sign to another, it will lose its um, its aspects, its connection, its like prominent aspects, you know, trine or square or whatever. Yeah. Um, with other celestial bodies. Yeah, okay. that makes it's sense. Working very independently. And that's called the void of course. And a lot of astrologers won't even book astrology readings when the moon is in void of course. In fact, I almost thought if, if about reaching out to you if you wanted to see do this a little earlier, because I know it's late in the evening there for you. But then I went and checked and I saw that the moon is in void of course today. So I wanted to, it was after that. Um, in fact, yeah, the, uh, I could go on and on. But there's so many little things. When the moon is in void, of course, ten, things can just tend to go a little wacky. It's, it's almost like a Uranus energy where things that happen that you weren't expecting, that sort of thing. It makes um, sense because it's yeah. like it's kind of, it's going through like that transformation, like from one sign to another almost. And it's like, it doesn't quite know where it is. I get that. I get what yeah. you, where you're coming from with that. It's almost like what's going on now with like all the planets from Capricorn going into Aquarius, almost. Yes, totally. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, yeah. Boy, I was I feeling that. Um, but yeah, there's so many little things that come into play. You know, there's that's another thing I guess that maybe I'll just bring up that um, I'll have a lot of people reach out to me that don't necessarily want an astrology reading, but they want to know when's the best time to go in for surgery or when's the best time for me to release this, you know, this video or this, you know, whatever it is, release this movie, that sort of thing. I have um, some like business associates that will reach out to me and ask when's the best time for me to do this, that, and the other thing. And it, I haven't, I haven't failed. I, every time that I've been able to, you know, give people just a little bit of guidance in that, they've always been super grateful, you yeah. know? So. See, by you just mentioning that, obviously I'm not a professional astrologer, but the way I would correlate that would, I would, you could maybe do that like through particular days because they connect with particular planets. So for example, yeah. you might want to release something on a Wednesday because it's the day of Mercury which is communication. Mm -hmm. So people, when you put something out, people might say, oh, have you seen this? And pass it on and stuff like that. Because the reason why I know this is because, like, I know that the elites use this technique. For example, like, 9-11 was on a Tuesday. A Tuesday is, like, the day of Mars. So it yeah, symbolizes yeah. war. Or yeah. they might bring out something on a Wednesday because... It's like communication, uh -huh. just to do with Mercury, and they play on particular days. Like, for example, or, or you might want to bring it out on a Friday, which is Venus and pleasure, and yeah. where someone's doing like in a good mood. Or see, that's the way I would correlate it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. That's just me off the top of my head. It's all of those things, all of them. You know yeah, what I mean? I mean? Yeah, yeah. I mean, honestly, I feel like. 
you know, I don't know if you've ever heard the expression, um, millionaires don't use astrologers, billionaires. Yeah, JP Morgan, isn't it? Is it JP right. Morgan? So, yeah, JP, I don't know. I don't yeah, know who's there. He's him who said that, yeah. Okay, so, and I feel like they probably use a team of astrologers. Yeah. You know what I mean? Where, because there's so many little things to look at. Like, for just an example, a friend of mine um, was going to have surgery when this whole, before, like, she was trying to figure out when was the best date for her to schedule her surgery. And um, this was just before the whole coronavirus thing broke out. But, um, you know, the first thing I looked at was to make sure that the moon would not be voiding, of course. Um, and then I wanted to make sure that um, the moon was it not in, you know, a, I wanted to make sure that the moon was actually in a mutable sign because when you're having surgery, you're adapt, you're changing things, you know? Um, so Pisces, or I think, I can't remember exactly which, which sign I went with, but oh yeah, it was Pisces. Pisces is mutable. And I was doing that right before it was um, moving into the sign of Aquarius because then it would be in a fixed sign to help things heal. Um, and then I also just wanted to make sure that, uh, gosh, there was just so many little things that I was looking into. I can't even, like, right now I can't. Yep. This is what I'm talking about. Why you would want a team of astrologers? Because like you're saying, well, maybe you'd want to make sure that it's on this day, be, you know, that you get a whole team of people. So, yep. absolutely. Even it, like the autumn, you know, like, because uh, I come from a Turkish background. Like, huh. I've, I've, I've like looked into like the Ottoman Empire and stuff like that in like the 1500s. And even like the sultans used to have their personal astrologers to tell them when it was right for them to go and invade a country or oh. to, for war and things like I know they used it in a bad way, but I'm just saying. Yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. like a lot of the higher organizations, they do use this, but obviously they don't tell us this. We like, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's totally. obvious, like they do. Like, I was watching about, um, uh, something about you know like Princess Diana's death, uh -huh. and about like Diana is like the moon goddess, and it relating to Isis and Paris, where she died. Paris means, I think, is it the sister of Isis, or it's all the and how it all connects, and it's so crazy that how how they, it's all rituals. They're all rituals. All exactly. even exactly. this Corona thing. Yes. It's a ritual yeah. of some sort. Yeah, 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 yeah. In fact, going back to my helping my friend pick the right time for her surgery, um, you know, that was just me on my own. But if there was a team of astrologers, let's say she was a billionaire and had a team of astrologers, one of those astrologers might would have been like, "Oh, but wait a minute. Okay, yeah, her transits look good for this. But when we take a look at the natural chart for what's going on for the world that day." There might be a pandemic, <laughs> you know, um, <laughs> that's what you want to call it. So j I, yeah, it's all those people that can afford it, it. They use it. It's obvious. It's so blatantly obvious, at least to, you know. You know what happens with me a lot, sister, like, like sometimes like I do check transits because I've got an app on my phone called Time Passages. That's the app I use. <laughs> Best one, oh, yeah. yeah you know what, the, guy who, the guy who created that lives here in where I live in Santa Cruz, California. Oh, wow, yeah, I love that app. It's like I swear by it. It's like it's yeah. taught me so much. Yeah. But like, um, I use that, but there's like days where, like, when I've been into work and everyone's just been really emotional and annoying, and, I, and like, not even, and like, sometimes because the moon moves so quick, like, I won't always check where the moon is, and I, and I say to myself, Oh, I bet the moon's in Capricorn today or something. And then I'll, I'll check and it is. And mm -hmm. it, oh, it makes so much sense why people are being all emotional. Or I bet it's a full moon. To, or I notice like when it's a full moon, people <laughs> always act up on a full moon at work. It's so, I know. So crazy, yeah. man. And, and another thing I've noticed, sister, about work as well, is like in my team at work, we have... Me, I'm a water sign. We have two, we have a Cancer, a Scorpio, a Taurus, 
a Gemini and an Aries. Okay. But I noticed that when it's just all water and earth signs working together, because there's different combinations on different days when certain people have their days off, we have a different combination of who's working. And I've noticed that when it's just water and earth signs together, we all work so efficiently and well. <laughs> I find that when there's an earth, an air or a fire sign, yeah. it's <laughs> like they had that like crazy more masculine energy whereas like with the earth and water because we're more feminine it's like we're a bit more stable and a bit more yeah. it's just like little things like that and i think oh my god it just this just makes too much sense it's like, so funny the colleague of mine said to me oh ain't it funny when this and this person's not here like how we work yeah together and then I thought, yeah, that's because they're air and fire signs and we're water and earth. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Just that's things hilarious. like that. It's just, it's so funny, man. It's just. That is hilarious. But yeah. yeah. But um, well, how are you doing for time, sister? It's I'm, like, okay. I'm okay. You know, I thought of one more thing that I, I feel like I yeah, should go bring. Go for it. I mean, it's so random, but you know, this whole. Um, like toilet paper apocalypse thing that we just went through. <laughs> I've been like, what, how can I bring astrology logic to this? Like, how did that happen? Okay. So right when that whole thing, I mean, it was so absurd to me. I, it was, I, mean, I was actually in hysterics laughing at some of the memes that I was yeah. seeing, you know what I mean? Um, but on the other hand, it was also just like, I, I can't wrap my head around the fact that somebody would need to think that they need to go buy 50 rolls of toilet paper. Yeah. If there's, they're afraid there's going to be an apocalypse. That would just be the last thing I would buy. But okay. So that all happened right when Saturn and Pluto went conjunct in Capricorn. Well, Pluto rules sewage and elimination. Okay. Oh, wow. Yeah. Saturn restricts energies right and then there's capricorn that kind of would create this fear <laughs> you know what i mean and i just was laughing so hard once i finally like put that together i was like jeez is it really that accurate is it is that yeah. Pluto and saturn and capricorn causing the toilet paper apocalypse <laughs> that is so that is so true sister like i was thinking of like why that particular like i think again you see what that is i think that's like a little rich like a little trick that yes! that exactly. has been played on us somehow but i don't it's like it's just trying to work out like, it's like you said why wouldn't it be like oh let's go and stack up on water for example like why why a toilet roll like, right. <laughs> it's just like I, I, it's like there's, like, I think there's like a metaphor behind that thing, but I just can't work it out at the moment. Of like, uh -huh. Uh -huh. yeah, no, I so, totally like, and completely agree with you that like, that was weird, isn't it? Like, what? Why? Because it's, I, yeah, I don't know. What I, don't I know. mean, what I like, the, what I, the, like, what I'm saying is, like, I don't mean to be crude or be rude, but like, what I'm saying is, like. Uh, you might be at home more. What are you buying more toilet roll because you're going to eat more? So that means you're going <laughs> to. I'm just trying to get into people's minds of why. Do you get what I mean? That's like because why you just buy the same amount you usually buy. I don't get what. The, I yeah. Don't get yeah. That yeah. Thing, but. Yeah. Yeah. No, I definitely think that there was a, a, again. We go back to the whole ritual thing. I'm sure there was something behind it. You know what I mean? But it also can be astrologically aligned. Yeah. You know? Well, it just might be. I don't know some <laughs> weird metaphor about flushing, and well, I, <laughs> I don't know. I really don't know. I'm just see me. See now, I'm trying to make the connection. <laughs> I got to force it, but I don't know what it is. Or maybe it just, maybe, sister, it's nothing to do with it. Maybe it just shows how retarded humanity is, unfortunately. <laughs> I know that might sound a bit rude and a bit blunt. See, that's my Sagittarian coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. But, yeah. um, 
I don't know. Yeah, like you said, that would it's really it's just a strange one. That's a really it's strange totally, one. totally, totally. But yeah, I, I mean, I, I had to find humor in it somewhere. That's you know? it. We've got to make. Uh, uh, we got to make sometimes, yeah, things like, yeah, just see the funny side of it. Just so what's your uh, Chinese animal astrology? I don't remember. I think. What year are you born in? 1978. Okay, I'll tell you. Uh, this is a really good book. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Oh, oh that's a different one. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Okay. Basically, what it does, it combines your western sign with your chinese sign and it tells you how you're supposed to be uh, okay okay so well, let's like, see what animal you are anyway so what are you 78 did you say yes yeah let's see and my jupiter is in gemini uh, i've got it in this and I've, I've got this in this other book i was reading something really interesting in this book it's about yeah. how in Chinese astrology, they use five elements, but they relate to the, like, the five planets. So, for example, wood is Jupiter, metal is Saturn, uh, earth is, I think earth is just earth, and okay. then you've got uh, um, the moon, no, no, because in their system, moon is yin and yang, I'll read it. It's, I'll put it here anyway. Okay. So, what did you say? 80? Uh, 78. 78. Where is it? So, 1978. Ah. That's so crazy. You're a Sagittarius Ascendant and you're in the year of the horse. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I'm always like seeking. Yes, yeah, the year of the horse. So it says the year of the horse, it says approximately equals June. So did you say it's in Gemini? Yes. Yeah, so that makes sense. June is in Gemini. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm the year of the pig. Right, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. You're Back saying astrology, yeah. You're so. Where, uh, what do you know? What degree your your Jupiter is at? I'll tell you right now. I think it's is it eight or fifteen? I'll tell you right now. I've got it. Okay. On here. All right. Uh, my chart is Jupiter. Yeah, sixteen. Sixteen okay. degrees, yeah. Okay. All right. But yeah, where was I reading about? Oh, here it says, yeah, it says wood is the beginning of the season of creation and equates to the planet Jupiter. Fire relates to the heat of Mars. Earth is the midpoint of the year, and is comparable to Saturn. Metal is the harvest. Metal is the harvest. Oh no, it's no. Sorry. I'm a bad reader. Saturn, metal is the harvest, and Venus finally is the water which feeds the growth, which will come from the wood and has its affinity with Mercury. So they've got like kind of a different system, which is really interesting. It was saying about how like the sun is just seen and moon are just seen as yin and yang, basically. Like it's just okay. Okay. how they view it. It's really interesting just to but do you know what I'd love to do sister one day is like because you're into like um sidereal astrology ain't you yes so i'd love to like ask because i'd like to learn more about that okay so it'd be good if one day we could like if i could ask you some questions or you could present some stuff to me yeah in terms yes, of like absolutely. that as well because i, I, I want to be a bit more broad-minded when it comes to the science of astrology obviously i'm aware of how different systems work just by that like, reading and things and stuff yeah, yeah, yeah. it's good to get a different um yeah just a different interpretation and a different outlook on it yeah. for sure for sure i mean at, at one of these days i'll probably want to dive a little deeper into mayan astrology yeah oh, the core oh wow oh my gosh wow i would love this book this i bet cool book. wow 
But do you know what we could even do, sister? Like we could do like um a kind of like a book reading series in the sense that maybe where we read a chapter and then we discuss the ideas, for example. Or... Yeah. Yeah. I'm game for that. I'm you get what I mean? It's just new ideas of something. Because then that way we just teaching each other and we get to learn. Do you get what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, this yeah, is a really cool book. And yeah. since, you know what's funny? You see all these books. Yes. I never went out with the purpose to buy them. They just all fell into my lap from like <laughs> looking in like secondhand shop and going yeah. to markets and stuff. Like it's crazy. Like these books have just all fell into my lap. That's hilarious. Yeah, That's like, awesome. This book to buy a brand new, I think, costs like where does it say? Where does it say? I remember it said it somewhere here. Price was on it somewhere. It costs. Oh, it costs twenty dollars. Uh huh. Buy it new. Yeah. I bought it for three pounds. Wow. That's like, the best. I, I was so like happy like when I came across this book. And That's do you know the work of Graham Hancock? Yeah. Yep. I, I went to see him live, and um, oh, wow, I got a signed copy of. Uh, Oh, wow. That's great. That's wonderful. Yeah, this book. This is an interesting book as well. Okay. Like the first half of it's a bit boring. It's a bit like, a bit too scientific and material about like uh, archaeology and things like that. It didn't, it was a uh -huh. bit boring the first half, but the second half I liked. It's still interesting. But the second half, he talks about like the pyramids and the Sphinx and how it lines up with Constellate. It's like more to do with what I like, if that makes sense. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, yeah, he was, um, that was one of the, one of the um, pioneers to my, you know, opening up myself to all this sort of information. Yeah, it's been a while since I've tapped into his stuff, but yeah, definitely that, that dude was onto something for sure. But definitely. Yeah. But yeah, I think uh, we've come to like a natural end to the show. So yeah, it's been a great one, sister, to catch up again. Thanks for joining me. And yeah, we're definitely going to bring you more stuff because uh, me and sister Erin, we've got a lot in common and we could talk forever. <laughs> obviously, we've got things to do and stuff. So uh, thanks for joining us again. Like I said, we've got another show. If you haven't seen that already, you can check that out as well. You don't have to watch them in any particular order. But yeah, it's just um, that one was more of a introductory show because it was the first time me and Sister Erin met and we're just kind of getting to know each other and stuff. So yeah, we're going to be bringing you many more shows with like astrology related themes and yeah, we I want to touch into so many things. Like I said, I would like to touch into like the sidereal stuff and like the medical stuff because obviously it relates to the work that you you've done as well and yeah. obviously yeah. I want to talk more about mushrooms as well because like that would be interesting uh, can I ask quickly sister a chest what are chestnut mushrooms good for or do you know much about them no I don't know much about them mm -mm. yeah because yeah. I had some today to eat okay I was okay. just wondering if you know any uh anything about them no, but what I'll tell you about mushrooms is that they carry something called polysaccharides, yeah. which is the immune boosting part of it. That you know, it just um, it works like in a friendly way with your immune system. Where like, okay, I don't want to go into this too much, but like you were yep. talking about um, oil of oregano. You know, you take the oregano oil. Yeah, I forgot how to pronounce it. How do you pronounce it again? Uh, I say oregano. Oregano. Okay. So what that does is that goes in and it really like kills parasites, which is great. You know, um, we, we want that as long as our body can flush it out. But the mushrooms are more of a gentle process of just removing things, you know, yeah. and making our own immune system kind of be able to take care of itself on its own. But most of the mushrooms that I you know, really, I, I eat all kinds of mushrooms all the time. I mean, because I'm very strict vegetarian and pretty darn close to being vegan. Yeah. Uh, but it, to me, that's like, 
I don't really differentiate between that anyway. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, people, I mean, I eat honey. I eat high quality yeah. local honey and, you know, I don't, I, I use it mindfully and that sort of thing, but regardless. Um, so being a, a strict vegetarian, mushrooms are a really good like substitute for meat and that sort of thing. But as far as like really diving into mushrooms on, for medicinal purposes, that's where mushrooms that come from trees, mushrooms yeah. that are growing out of trees. That's really what I'm most familiar with. Oh, we, can okay. we can go deeper into that. We'll, we'll yeah, definitely, definitely go deeper into that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, just again to start, let people know how they can get in contact with you. Obviously, I'm going to leave it in the description, but you can always just sign off by it. For sure, yeah. Yeah, I, um, so for right now, just send me an email at Erin Wage Astrology, E-R-I-N-W-A-A-G-E, astrology at gmail.com. I do have a website and I can send it to you, but there's just some things that I need to update on my website and I just haven't taken the time to do that yet, so. For sure. Yeah. Okay, sister, again, thank you for joining me. All right. Stop.